What's up, nerds? I'm Jasmine. And I'm Brandon. And we've got some comic book reviews for you. Coy middle with it. Yep. Hey guys, this is Haley with my review of Saucer Country number one. So the cover obviously alludes to something that has to do with aliens and perhaps politics. And what I liked about the way that they do this is that you're kind of wondering what the tie-in with the aliens is throughout the whole story. And you don't really find out until the very, very end. They kind of give you hints. And so it's a really good mystery. And it's tied in politically with this uh, female uh, who's in power, which is really interesting as well. And she's also, it kind of goes off on illegal aliens. So I like the tie-in in both meanings of the word alien. So I think it's really interesting. I think it's going to pick up a lot as the story progresses. So I'm going to give it three nerd skulls. Hey guys, this is Haley with my review of Neverland Hook number four. And I really wanted to give this book a try because I've always seen the images of these Xenoscope green uh, grim fairy tales and I've been weary. So I was like, okay, I'll go in and I'll give it the best shot I can. So the beginning was interesting. And then at the end, I don't know what happened. It completely lost me. They had me for a little while. Like I was surprised at how interested I was to begin with. And then they just lost me. I'm gonna give it two nerd schools because it was a little bit entertaining. So I got a chance to read Dark Shadows number four this week, a book that I've been slowly catching up on, but I'm kind of regretting taking so long now. This book is really good. It's written very well. And uh, the story comes together in number four. The art is even better. Um, a complete story, and it does pay a huge homage to the original. And with the new movie coming out with Johnny Depp, you're going to want to read this book. I'm going to give it four out of five nerd skulls. Saga number one came out this week. If you do not all know, I love Brian K. Vaughn. I love Fables. I love Why the Last Man. I love everything he produces. And I've been waiting for Saga to come out. But I have to admit, I did not know much about it. I don't think a lot of us did, though. Uh, the main character has horns, and the woman has, has fairy wings. Looks a little weird from the outside, but I'm glad I got to read it this week. It is really, really good. You're going to want to prepare yourself for an intergalactic war, though. It's a true love story, what Brian K. Vaughn is really good at, but it does have a lot of interspatial travel. Looks, it's really good. You're going to want to read this one. I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls. Hey there, guys. Kevin here with my comic reviews this week. I got to read Theta Thieves number two. Now, I went back and read the first one just to make sure I was caught up, and I got to say, it's a pretty good con continuation. Um, it's a little more exciting than the first one. It has uh, the artwork in, in the whole series. Um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Not the greatest I've seen, but it works for the story really, really well. So it is awesome. It, it does come out and it does kind of pop a little more. Um, it's really wordy, so you're not trying to look at the pictures too much. Everything's being explained to you, and it's a lot of referencing the past. So it's, it, it works really, really well. Um, overall, pretty exciting. I'm excited to see what, what happens later on, uh, but nothing big has happened so far. It does end on a pretty good cliffhanger, though. So I'm going to give this book three out of five nerd skulls. Hey there, guys. I got to read Star Wars Agent of the Empire number four. This is a really, really good book series. I'm enjoying every little bit of it. Um, espionage and Han Solo and Chewbacca are in it. It's just all these really cool, interesting facets of the Star Wars universe you don't get to see in the movies. You kind of get to see in the movies a little bit. You get to see in the shows a little bit, but this is like a full-on comic based all around that. Um, really cool character, Jahan Cross. He's just this ultra badass. Cooler than Han Solo, in my opinion, because he's a spy and he you know, has crazy space sex with a ton of people. That's the coolest thing ever. It's like James Bond, but in space. Um, I would definitely recommend to everyone. The storyline has been really, really crazy, really, really fun and exciting. Um, it, it's going to end in the next issue, um, but hopefully we got more issues of this story coming. I'm going to give this four to five nerd skulls. All right, guys, I got to read Green Lantern number seven. And holy crap, another great Green Lantern book. Jeff Johns is writing it, so it's kind of hard to make a bad Green Lantern book when that happens. But this time, we've got a new story arc, uh, finally getting some more information on the Indigo tribe. And since they've been introduced, they've been wrapped in mystery. And it's still, with the first issue of the story arc, still wrapped in more mystery. Um, but it's, it's getting there. We're, we're kind of getting a little bit of answers. We see the Black Hand show up. It ends really crazily. I do not want to give anything away, but it has a very great ending with a lot of good answers, or a lot of good questions to be answered, um, and a lot of good plot lines that are kind of like laid out. I really do not want to give anything away, and if I mention one little thing in this book, I probably will, so check it out as soon as you can. Um, I'm going to give this a five out of five nerd skulls. Hey guys, Brandon here, and I was fortunate enough to read Batman and Robin number seven. This has definitely been my top two bat title with Batman and 
uh, Batman and Robin. They are both awesome. And man, this one from the first page to the last page is just action and oh, a pissed off Bruce Wayne. You do not mess with Bruce Wayne's family because you know what happens? You get the crap kicked out of you. I love the direction this book is going in. The ending even throws another curveball, which I'm like, oh, okay, story's over. Did it? No. Uh, definitely going to see repercussions in the upcoming story arc, I assume. I, I cannot wait. I, I'm like just patiently waiting to read this book every month. If you're not reading this, you're absolutely foolish. I'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls. I got to read Scarlet Spider number three. I'm still very much enjoying this book. Uh, I love Spider-Man and everything about Spider-Man, so why not read a book about his clone? So far, this is delivered every issue. Uh, this issue is no different. Awesome artwork, wonderful writing. Uh, now we're set up for who he's going to be facing. You know, he kind of just showed up in Texas and, you know, saved some things. Nothing crazy, but this one, you're definitely seeing who he's going to be facing. Very excited to see where this goes. I'm giving it four out of five nerd skulls. I got to read Peter Panzerfaust, number two, and this surprised the hell out of me. Uh, I'm usually hit or miss on reimagining. Sometimes I, I will be all about them, and other times, that's lame. This is actually pretty interesting. Uh, sort of a reimagining of Peter Pan and, you know, the Lost Boys during World War II. Uh, this issue, they're saving some English soldiers from some, you know, Nazis, and I, I was very entertained. I was very entertained this whole way through. Really good artwork. Uh, they have a little page showing you setting up for the next issue. Looks like we're getting a Wendy. Uh, I'm, I'm completely on board with this. I'm giving this 5 out of 5 Nerd Skulls. If you guys can, make sure you're reading it. What's up, guys? Jasmine here with my comic reviews for the week. First up is Exile from the Planet of the Apes, number one. I'm not going to lie. I have not really followed Planet of the Apes on any level for my entire life. So I was excited to read this book. Maybe I could just pick it up and see what happened. And that's exactly what did happen. I was able to just figure out what's going on. There's humans, there's apes, they're enslaved. Gotcha. Very easy. Uh, the art's very good. This comic is also very well written. And the story is really good. And you don't expect what you're going to see on the last page. And I love that with the book because I didn't guess this one. And I usually do. So I'm going to say this is a good read. Definitely pick it up if you are a fan. Or if you're not a fan and you don't know anything about it, pick it up and learn something. I'm going to give it four out of five nerd skulls. Next up is Avengers Assemble, number one. I am caught up on what's going on in the Marvel Universe, but not so much so that I was excited for this comic anyway. Um, however, when I read it, I really liked how it was written, and then I realized Brian Michael Bendis wrote it. I am not a Bendis hater, so I had to like it. I just didn't realize I did, and then it was good, and I liked it. However, the art in this comic was so spotty. Uh, I got the story, Avengers are running around doing stuff in Latveria, and opening the new tower, and all that stuff, and that's great they're together, and that's cool and awesome. But what caught me more was the preview for Avengers vs. X-Men in the back of the book. I wish that comic would have kept going and going and going, and I can't wait to watch that and watch what happens on the pages of that. As for Avengers Assemble, I'm gonna give it three out of five nerd skulls. Well-written, bad art. I will say though, stay tuned with what's going on at Marvel, because it's gonna be great. All right, that's all the reviews we have for you this week, but until next week, be sure to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube page, and check out nerdlocker.com for all your nerdy news. My name's Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. And we'll see you next week for even more comic book reviews.